right, welcome to Sunday school this fine Sunday morning. Nice and brisk and feeling great. As we like to do, we'll start off by singing a song. Amen. Amen. Page 516 in your hymnals, if you please stand. Our Sunday school song. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Amen. It's wonderful to be a Christian this morning. <clears throat> Page 560 in your hymnals. On the first. Life has purpose now it never had before. There is meaning to each day and even more. For a joy and peace I can't explain is mine. Since I found new life in Christ my Lord divine. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it is wonderful to be God's child. morning, everybody. Who's having a good morning this morning? Amen. amen. Oh, we got one. All right, amen. <laughs> yeah, amen. I'm warming up. I'll get there. Amen. If you ain't not warmed up yet, we got coffee freshly brewed for you there. Till the spirit gets moving, the coffee will keep you going. Amen. So at this time, we like to do, before Sunday school, we like to take a special time, praises and prayer requests. How has the Lord blessed you this week? What are some things on your heart that you want the Lord to answer for the week ahead? We'd like to share those things. Take, sorry, I'm out of breath. <laughs> and take a special time to uh, pray to God as a church and let him know those things. But um, while you think about those things, um, I don't have a devotional this morning. It wound up in another car that wound up somewhere else. No, I don't have it. But I do have a story. I know uh, we've had several people in the church that we've been praying for um, different things. And I had a really great story about a fella. His name was uh, Dean Miller. Anybody ever heard of Dean Miller? New name? Pastor probably knows. He was a pastor of yesteryears. Around the time, he was a contemporary with Jack Howes, people like that. And a uh, special thing about Dean Miller, he was a man of God, King James only, Bible-believing, independent, fundamental Baptist preacher. He uh, had a church out in uh, Colorado Springs. And uh, through uh, the Lord working... He wound up actually, uh, he got a, some millionaire guy saved on his deathbed, and the guy wound up selling him a piece of land in Colorado Springs. It was the highest piece of land property in the whole city. So a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, right? So everybody knew about this guy's church. Well, at the time, um, parachurch organizations were starting to grow in America. If you don't know about those, those are... Uh, church organizations that spread out very far. Um, they like to start churches. These are your coastal churches, Liberty Live, these types of organizations that kind of spread over. And they don't stand on King James Bible. They don't, they, they're very wishy-washy, seeker-sensitive, very compromising. Well, Colorado Springs at the time was a central hub for parachurch organizations. So when his church set up and they stood strong on King James only, <laughs> He got attacked a lot. And actually, he got the gospel to spread even further. He had, like, uh, some Satanist group come in and ransack his church, stabbed a picture on his desk of his wife and everything. And uh, Jim Jones sprayed over everything in his house. And a great, uh, well, a great story of persecution for standing on the word of God. Great man of God, right? Well, the uh, thing about Dean Miller, um, he didn't start that way. He was actually a guy that... Uh, his mother and father had him out of wedlock, and his mother, at a young age, ran away from his father, and he grew up not knowing his father. And they actually moved out in the middle of nowhere, Montana, from, I believe, Indiana. And uh, him growing up, he grew up with a stepfather who was a staunch Catholic and a heavy drinker. He would actually take him to bars at the age of nine and taught him how to take shots without making a face and show off to his friends. So he grew up an alcoholic strong alcoholic, and of course, uh, the end of that life didn't go too well. He wound up getting married. I believe his wife had been a Mormon or something, but uh, you know, as he got older, he was drinking, his life wasn't going too well, and then finally his wife was fed up with it when she came to him in a bar and he was passed out in his own vomit in a gutter, 
and now they were getting a divorce. They didn't wind up divorcing, but they were going through the process of a divorce when his unborn child died as well, probably from the stress. And he was mad at God, and they buried the child, and he was upset because there were just no answers in life. Uh, growing up not knowing his father, and then uh, he was working as a car mechanic, and at the time, uh, he, a guy came, he was a Bible-believing Baptist, came working with him, and uh, you ever heard of Dean Miller? Oh, yeah, yeah, Colorado. Yep. Yeah. And so um, the guy had a burden for him because his kid had died, and he tried to reach him with the gospel, and ultimately, he got saved, and he came to his house, got his wife saved too, and they got uh, on fire for God. They wound up moving to uh, outside of Colorado, somewhere in Colorado. And then, yeah, it made it there. But um, it was somewhere near there. And uh, anyway, his, I guess his dad's side of the family found him. He wound up going back to his home and uh, meeting his dad. And then um, finally, I guess his dad's mom really missed him. And they brought him in, and she was a very old lady. And they, his dad had found him, and they brought him in, and they said, Hey, Mom, do you know who this is? And she said, That's Dean. His name was Dean. She knew him. She recognized him, even though he, he only saw him when he was young. And she told him, We've been praying for you every day. Turned out they were Baptists. And they had told him, you never guess what your dad is. Baptist preacher. And all these Baptist people have been praying for him for, for years and years and years. They didn't even know. And obviously that had a great effect in his life, right? But, uh, and he wound up doing great things, like we mentioned before we started. But I just wanted to highlight that story because his story wasn't special. Or it's special, but it's not only that one. There's so many stories of power of prayer, people praying year after year after year. And you think about that family who for 18, 20 years, however long it was, didn't see him, but kept praying and praying and praying, and it made all the difference. God works in his own time, but if we stay faithful to prayer, even when you don't think it's going to work out, it'll work out. And uh, if you ever get a chance, I think his life story testimony, it's like a two-parter sermon series. It's on YouTube. If you ever get a chance to check it out, it's a real great blessing. But I just want to share that with you. And this time, we'll go over praise his prayer request. So if you got one, lift up your hand nice and high. We'll get you one. Uh, keep praying for my wife. Uh, she's not feeling too good. So uh, pray for her. And... Keep her in your prayers. Amen. Any other praises or prayer requests at this time? Yes, sir. Andrew and I were visiting this little guy named uh, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah, he, he was kind of a Real finicky, weird, yeah. finicky kind of guy, but uh, he's, he's been going through some stuff. He's been saying, I need to go to church. And this is the second time he came across one of our tracks. So yeah, uh, I saw time. somebody here approach him at a bus stop or something. I said, oh, that's know. rare. I, I somebody from our church? He said, oh, yeah, I know this track. I've seen it before. So I said, well, okay. Uh, Something like it. Like someone, you know, upstairs. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's trying to get your attention. Didn't mean to come to church. Things have been crazy. So here you go. And we have prayed for people when they walk in, like, right after. Yeah. Yeah. He was real, I want to go to church, but just not at the moment. I yeah. just don't know when. I, I was like, look now. Ask for salvation now. What a great reason to. You guys show up at a moment? Yeah, that's what we're trying to tell. Yeah. Hey, come to us twice now. Tell us you can save now. Don't wait. Hey, Amen. That's cool. That's a praise and prayer. We'll keep praying for that. Amen. Any other praise or prayer requests at this time? I'm a sweater. Don't mind that. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I married my family. I married my family. You married in your family. Oh, I thought you said you managed that company. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> pray, pray for that, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Marriage and family. Always pray for marriage and family. Can't imagine much more important than family other than God. Yeah. All right. Any other praises or prayer requests at this time? Keep, yes, sir. I just got a praise. I, I was able to accomplish the breakfast goal this morning. It was rough. Well, I got it done. So good. Church for your glory, I guess. Is Miss Shante approved? She looks she's gonna like. Oh yeah. <laughs> Pray God for the mighty miracle of a man that made breakfast for all yeah. of us this morning. Divine intervention today at this church. Oh, yeah. What a blessing. Amen. I haven't had one yet, but I know I can't wait to try one. 
Amen. Any other praises and prayer requests at this time? All right. We'll take these to the Lord in prayer. We'll keep praying for our church, too. And I will pray for the lesson this morning. Amen. Dear Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you so much that you brought us all here safe today this morning, Lord. We thank you for the visitors, Lord, this morning, too. And we just pray that you would uh, bless us, keep blessing our church and helping it to grow, Lord. And um, uh, just helping us to be good, faithful witnesses, Lord. We want to praise you, Lord, for, uh, again, this church, Lord. I want to thank you, uh, Brother Andrew, and breakfast this morning, Lord. We just pray that... Uh, and just continue to bless this church and uh, help us all to seek to look after each other and to help each other with our needs and what we need, Father. We uh, keep praying for my wife too, Lord, Father. I pray that I uh, heal her, help her to feel better, Lord, and um, just help her work out that situation, Lord. And uh, we pray for uh, Kevin that was spoken to out soul winning yesterday, Lord. Uh, Lord, I just pray you work on his heart and that he would uh, bring in the church. And I um, know where he's at right now, but I know where he should be. And we just pray that uh, you'd work it out, that we'd see him walk through these doors this morning. And you knew this prayer before we even prayed it. And you could have done all the things to bring him here. We trust you, Lord, to do it. And we just pray that we could see that. And uh, according to your will and according to your time, Lord, we trust you. And keep praying for uh, uh, Brother Luis and his family, Lord, and marriage, Lord, and just continue to bless that situation. Uh, this is the place to be. There ain't no other place to be on a Sunday in church, Lord. Amen. And I pray you just bless the faithfulness and uh, help continue to grow closer together. Um, family is so important. It's an institution that you've established. And I uh, pray you help us to do better every day uh, to do that. Uh, give it the love that you've um, commanded us to do, Lord. And uh, we pray that you bless us for this lesson this morning, Lord. I pray that you'll pastor up with your spirit of wisdom and understanding and uh, help us all to be attentive. To listen to what it is that you got for us this morning, Lord. And uh, we love you so much, Father. And we ask all this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's, uh, let's take our Bibles. Let's go to Isaiah. Nice to see everyone this morning. And uh, oh, yeah, that breakfast, breakfast looks good over there. Andrew looks yeah. like did a good job. Uh, Spence, he put one of those on his plate. And he was walking over to the Sunday school class area. And he had it on the plate, oh, and no. then he turns around and <laughs> <laughs> drops it, drops it on the floor. Five second rule. Yeah, five second rule. Five second rule. Faith just bent over, <laughs> picked it up, put it in, and was like, "All right, here you go." <laughs> yeah. Spence doesn't care, and uh, we we do care. We as his parents, we do care, but we also know Spence can handle it. That boy, if there was a piece in here and there, he wouldn't care. He would just <laughs> he'd eat it. All right, the book of Isaiah. And uh, last week, we started off looking in Isaiah, um, and uh, today's, I, I guess, part two of this Isaiah um, survey, and really what we've done is we've gone through all the books of the Bible so far up until Isaiah, and I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed it. Um, I've, me personally, uh, as I've been able to do the studying of this, I've learned from it, so um, if my teaching has been horrible, at least one person has learned from this, and that's this guy. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but but I, I believe that we we've learned some some truths from uh, the the uh, from these past books of the Bible that we've looked at, and uh, uh, and so today looking at Isaiah last week, like I said, we started off, but I, I have about seven pages of notes uh, that I did for Isaiah. I was able to go about two and a half of them, so I'll finish it up uh, today. And the next week, we're going to look at, do you guys know which book we're going to look at next week? Jeremiah, Jeremiah there we go. Uh, we're going to look at Jeremiah. Uh, and uh, Jeremiah is a good book as well. Now, next week, Brother Mike, he's going to be doing the Sunday School lesson uh, in the book of Jeremiah. And uh, the plan is to do Jeremiah in one week. <laughs> uh, that's, that's the plan, but uh, there's... Uh, these are some good books. I, I, I love these uh, books of the Bible right here. In my Bible reading, my daily Bible reading, I'm reading through these uh, major prophets right now. And, and last week we looked at what the major prophets are. There's uh, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and then Daniel. Those are the major prophets. The rest are the minor prophets. And uh, we kind of looked at, we looked at the book of the law, right? Does anyone remember the, the, the law book? 
I don't remember which the ones those are. Five, right? The first five, right? Yeah. The first five. And uh, does anyone know what the first five are? Genesis. Genesis. There you go. There you go. And uh, th that's good. Good job. This is your first time here. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, that's a fast learn, though. Uh, uh, but those, those are a lot. Does anyone remember what I said last week? It comes after the first five books, but with those, the next books, what their title? Does anyone remember? I, I, I know you know. And, and remember the law. Then we have the books of his story. His his story, right? History, books of history, and uh, those ones. Those are so good. I love those ones. If you have not taken the time to go through Joshua, Judges, all the way to Second, all the way to Esther, all the way to Esther, those those are so good. Just how they flow, it is. I love it. It, it is great. Yeah. Um, I love the first five books of the Bible, but then when I hit Joshua, I'm like, oh man, yeah. this yeah. is good. It, it, pu it pumps me up, really. Yeah. And then I read Joshua in one day, I'm like, oh man, that went, that went by too fast. Uh, but it, it, there's some good books. I want to encourage you to, uh, to read those books, read the law. Uh, I'm actually, this year, normally what I do in my Bible reading is, normally I'll start off in Genesis and then I'll start off in Matthew at the same time. And I'll read, uh, you know, three chapters in Genesis and then go over to Matthew and read Matthew chapter one. Uh, and then I'll read a psalm uh, or, and, and do a proverb. And that's normally what I do in my Bible reading. That's how I started off this year. Um, but then when I got done, I was like, okay, I'm going to do it a different way. And I've never done it this way. I'm just going to read it all the way through. Believe it or not, I've never just read the Bible through, just straight through. I've always done it the same way of three chapters in Genesis, one chapter in the Gospels, and then just read it through that way. Uh, and so this way, I've enjoyed it. I've, it it's, it's been fun. And so I kind of tossed it up this year in my, my 28th year of life, and it's been, it's been good. I've enjoyed it. Uh, but so now in my Bible reading... Um, in, in Jeremiah. Jeremiah is a really good book, so I'm looking forward to, to next week, and thank you for Brother Mike being able to teach that for next week as well. Now, uh, this morning we do not have Brother Allen or Miss D. Yeah. I'll tell you what, it's kind of thrown me off a little bit. It's sad. I'll, I'll be honest, it's, it's sad. <laughs> this, this morning when, when we pulled up in the driveway, I saw four vehicles and I didn't see the red truck, and I'm like, uh-oh. I forgot they're not going to be here this morning. And normally, uh, Brother Allen or Miss D will wake up early and, and get here early and lock the doors. And so I forgot. I feel bad. Um, but actually, there was a couple weeks ago uh, that we had a, a baptism. And uh, Brother Allen, he came in at about 6 o'clock in the morning. And uh, he turned the heater on. And, uh, and that was, amen. So very thankful for them. And we missed them this morning. And so pray for them as they're traveling. And to pray as they as they head back. Uh, I think they're just about three or four hours away, and they're visiting uh, their daughter-in-law. Uh, she's expecting. Also, uh, if you could pray for this as well, um, I forgot to say this. My sister, uh, she's pregnant with twins, and uh, she's actually she's going to have a C-section tomorrow. And so, uh, pray for her. Pray for the doctors and everything uh, situation there. The, the twins, uh, they're both breached right now, and so. Uh, obviously, she wouldn't be able to have a, just a normal pregnancy, so they're going to have to do <laughs> and So uh, just, just pray for her and the doctors in that situation. Um, when, when Faith had the twins, um, Waylon, he's, he's what you would consider baby B, because he's the, the second baby that, that you know, would be born. Uh, and so Weston was baby A. He was the first one. He was, he was, he was born the normal way, right? Uh, but Waylon, though, was breached. Uh, but with, with that situation, it was okay because one baby was born the normal way, and so you could do everything else just normal. And so, uh, but this obviously, you know, that that first baby cannot be born Greek, so they have to do the C-section. So pray, uh, pray with them. Yeah. So pray, pray with them. Uh, pray for them uh, tomorrow. Pray for Miss uh, Miss V, Brother Allen, with their traveling mercies. And uh, I think really that's it for people traveling this weekend. Uh, we've had a lot of people traveling lately, and so 
uh, uh, hopefully that's the last one for, for the rest of Peninsula Baptist Church's lifespan. No one else ever travel again. Just stay here. Don't go anywhere. Don't go see family. It's not, no, I'm just joking. Uh, but uh, next week, though, next week, I do want to say this before we get into Sunday school. So next week is our two-year anniversary of Peninsula Baptist Church. Amen. Two years. That is amazing. Yes, two years. And uh, that is exciting. And so I'm very thankful for two years that we've been able to be here. God has blessed our church big time, Amen. very much so. And God has grown the church. Uh, you know, the Bible says that Paul planted a polished water, but God gives the increase. And I'll tell you what, uh, this church is a testimony of how God gives the increase. Uh, this church is a testimony of how if you plant, if you take the time to plant uh, that gospel seed, if you take time to water, uh, that God will give the increase. And, and this church is a testimony of that. And I'm very thankful for what God is doing here. And uh, I'm looking forward to next Sunday. Uh, and then uh, th that'll be a good day. So next Sunday, what we're doing is we're going to have a potluck after the morning service. And we're going to be over in the fellowship hall. Um, and then also as well, we have the chili cook-off we're doing next week as well. So if you make chili, make sure you bring it next week. And we're going to have a contest. I actually had a, a guy from work. He was, he's been here a couple of times. He was like, I'll, I'm going to be there. He's like, I can't be there this Sunday. Uh, he actually, he lives about three hours away from here, uh, his family does, so a lot of times he actually goes back and, and goes to his family's church, but on weekends where he's a little bit busier, if he stays here, uh, then that's when we'll, where he'll visit us, and he's like, but I, I'm going to be there, and, uh, and then also Lathan Shingledecker, he, I guess he went hunting a couple weeks ago, and he, he killed, killed a couple of deer, and he's going to do some, some venison chili. Are you about the guy who went on the dock the boats? Oh, never mind. No, 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 no. I know. Um, but, so that'll be, that'll be interesting next week. So that, we're going to have different types of chili, and that'll be good. So I'm looking forward to that. Then also today, during the service, we'll have, really throughout the day, Brother, Brother Mike, we probably need to empty out the, the buckets and, and, of rubber bands. But today we have that penny parade. And so uh, we got to find a place to put Brother Brandon. We need to find a place to put the rubber bands and put those somewhere else. And so what we're doing at the penny parade is, this whole week really is going to be the penny parade. So if you have change and you're on the orange team, dump it in your orange bucket. If you're on the blue team and you have change, dump it in the blue bucket. So we have this morning that will, that anytime you can come up and dump change in there. Even if you see rubber bands, go ahead and dump your change in there. And then that just means that the team coaches are going to have to uh, <laughs> fix that. So. Uh, if you want to cause a problem for the team coaches, just dump all the change in there, and then they'll have to go through and sort it out. <laughs> amen. Uh, but amen. <laughs> uh, but then, so we'll, we'll do it again tonight, and then Thursday night we'll do it again, and then next week we'll see who'll be the winner. So we have all week uh, to dump change in the buckets and uh, bring, bring change and uh, get those buckets heavy. I'm saying cash doesn't weigh a lot. Now, we're fine with if you bring cash, you know, those $1,000, $5,000 bills that you've been making at your house. That's okay. You can bring it. Uh, but uh, it doesn't weigh a lot. And so change is the way to go because we're, we're going to see who has the heavier bucket. And so uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll weigh it next week, and that'll be fun. But you have all this week, all this week to fill up those buckets of change and get it heavy, 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 heavy. All right. So now we're in Isaiah. We're in Isaiah. At least you all are. I am not. Uh, now, how do we know which Isaiah this is? Do you guys remember that from last week? How do we know which Isaiah this is? It says it. It says it, it, says it right? In, in verse 1. Uh, so let's look at chapter 1, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 1. It says, The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos. Amos. Amos, something like that. Amos, son of Amos. Son of Amos. And so there we go. We, we see which Isaiah this is, and uh, we looked at that last week. Now, does anyone remember, uh, I gave a percentage last week of how much of the book of the Bible is talks about prophecy. Does anyone remember? 20, do you remember? 25%. 25%. 25% of the Bible deals with prophecy. And uh, if we had a God who... Uh, or, or, if, or if this book was just written by a bunch of men, um, they probably wouldn't fill it up so much with prophecy because history would, pr pr would prove that they're wrong, right? Uh, but this book is written by God. 
This is the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Holy Spirit wrote this book right here. Use Holy Spirit filled men. And I'll tell you what, the reason why it's 25% prophecy is to prove that this book is real. It's to prove that God is real. And also what it does as well, uh, it comforts us. Prophecy Amen. comforts us Christians. Um, you know, I, I, I think of the world, the world in which we live in. And, uh, you know, us as Christians, those who are saved, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, if you're not trusting in your works, but trust in the work of Christ, um, if you are, have done that, hey, prophecy is a comfort to us. We do not have to worry about the world in which we live in. We don't have to worry about that stuff at all. Uh, no, hey, you're saved. You're good to go. You're good to go. And uh, we can trust in God's promises. And the Bible even tells us, Paul says, to comfort each other in these words of prophecy. Amen. The coming of Jesus Christ. And uh, uh, those, that's a comforting thing. Uh, as Christians, we're in the family of God. Yesterday, Christian and I, we talked to a guy named Dion. Dion Newsom. And I uh, talked to Dion yesterday, and uh, yesterday we asked him if he went to church anywhere. And Christian, he went to a church, didn't he? Uh, but then, then we asked him, if uh, we, we said, Dion, are you 100% sure if you go to heaven when you die? And he said, well, I, I'm a good person. I, I, I do good things. Right, that was pretty much what he said, right, Christian? And, uh, and so Christian and I, we took maybe 30 minutes. We kind of tag teamed a little bit, you know. Uh, uh, Christian would tap my shoulder, and then I'd jump out, and he'd jump in, and then and then I tap his shoulder, I jump in. You know, it, it was fun. Uh, but we were showing him in the Bible how it's not by works. It's not by works. Uh, it's trusting in God's promise. It's Amen. trusting in, in, in Christ, um, and uh, and that brings comfort. That brings confidence to the Christian. And uh, we were talking to Dion about that yesterday. And so Isaiah prophecy, man, it is comforting. It is comforting to know that we have a deliverer in Jesus Amen. Christ. Um, and so last week, I, I think I ended, if I remember correctly, at about the key verse, which is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. And uh, it says, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. Now, how does that happen? By trusting in Christ, right? Yeah. But believing, believe, believe. You have to believe. But how is that going to happen? You need to put your faith in Jesus Christ. And we see right away, man, this is a gospel book. Amen. This, is, this is the gospel right here. Uh, this is the good news. We need to put our faith in Jesus Christ. He's the deliverer. Uh, he's the redeemer. We need to put our faith in him. If you have not done that today, I want to encourage you. If you haven't done that, uh, not just today. If you have never done that in your life, hey, I want to encourage you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, I, I want to encourage that. And so we see that key verse is Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. Uh, now, when was this book of Isaiah. What, what, what time would this have been written? And uh, I, I like to know when different books of the Bible, when they possibly would have been written. I, I, I like to know that, so I want to give that out. Uh, but one thing we need to do is we need to understand, in order to know that, we need to understand the time of Isaiah's ministry. And uh, his ministry, Isaiah, extends from about 740 B.C. to 690 B.C. Now, does anyone know what B.C. stands for? Before Christ, right? Uh, has anyone ever seen it where, where they'll say uh, 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 BCE, right? Yeah. Anyone ever seen that? Okay. Before civilization or, or before common era. Before common era. And then there's just CE, which is the common era. Now that's a newer thing. That, that is a, a newer thing that, that has been done. And the reason why people will do that is because they don't want to center their life around Christ. Mm -hmm. That's why. But... Uh, one thing we need to realize is history is centered around Christ. Mm -hmm. right. um, and you, you can try to change it. You can do all this sort of stuff. You can create new things of CE and BCE. Uh, but no matter what, uh, no matter how much you don't want your life to be centered around Christ, your life is going to be centered around Christ whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. And we need to realize that. Uh, and so here it's BC. I like BC, before Christ. And Amen. so this is Amen. 740 uh, it's about 690 B.C. Uh, we have Isaiah's ministry. So about approximately 50 years. 
Uh, and this covers the reign of Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, and Manasseh. And they're all kings of Judah. Uh, the historical background for this period in which we can read uh, is found in 2 Kings chapter 15 through 21. Now, I think that's very important to know. Because now when you read 2 Kings chapter 15 through 21, we can understand that, yep, this is Isaiah. This is the one Isaiah who wrote, hey, that major prophet, the book of Isaiah, right? Amen. And uh, I like to know that stuff. I, I like to see the charts. Sometimes I, I think Brother Mike, you did a chart uh, a couple months ago where it shows uh, the prophets who were the, the prophet during certain types of kings. And uh, it can give us a better understanding of God's word when we read through the Old Testament, knowing where uh, these prophets, where they served that, uh, under, over which kings and things like that. And now, uh, to whom was Isaiah written? Uh, Isaiah, he, uh, uh, as a prophet, ministered primarily to that southern kingdom of Judah. Uh, and so pretty much like what I just said, you had, remember those four kings, you had Jotham, you had uh, Ahaz, Hezekiah, and Manasseh. They were in Judah, which is the southern kingdom. And that's very important to know as well. It's important to know that uh, that there was Solomon, uh, that, well, there was first Saul, right? Saul was the first king, uh, first human king of Israel. Then you had David, uh, and then uh, you had Solomon. But then after Solomon, the kingdom was split. And that's important to know as well as we read our Bible so we can understand that, discern that in our Bible reading, that there was that northern kingdom, which was named what? Israel. I don't know. Israel. 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 Then there's that southern kingdom, which we just looked at, but was named what? Judah. Judah. Uh, and so that, so those, that kingdom, Israel, gets split. Uh, and so uh, you have Isaiah, who served in that southern kingdom and was a prophet there in Judah. Now his message, it was directly uh, uh, directed mainly towards Judah's sinful people. And we see this in chapter 1, verse 4, where it says, Ah, oh, sinful nation. Ah, oh, sinful nation. Right there talking to Judah. Uh, a people laden with iniquity. A seed of evildoers. Children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Oh man, this is a sinful people. Amen. This is, a uh, Judah was, man, sinful, filled with sinful people. I want us to understand today, uh, in the nation we live in, we live in a nation of sinful people. And, uh, you know, to have a prophet, to have uh, a prophet back then, but to have a pastor to, today who says, ah, oh, sinful people, we need to realize that's loving. Mm-hmm. You know what Isaiah is doing right here, this book of Isaiah? We talked last week about how there's five different deliverances. Well, why do those deliverances ha have to happen? Because they sin. Yeah. And so that the, the, the reason God delivers them is because, first and foremost, they sin. And because of their sin, there was a penalty. And that penalty for Israel's sin was captivity. And we see that they'd be put into captivity. Then you see they finally get back to God, and there's a deliverance. Um, but Isaiah, he's warning them the whole time. Sinful nation, people filled with iniquity, get back to God. Hey, that's love. Amen. That's love to warn people of captivity, of destruction, of a, of a coming day of destruction. That is love. I'll tell you what, there's many of people today sitting across America who go to churches who don't want to be warned. They want to be comforted. Correction is not a thing that people like. Comforted. And, and you know what happens if we get comforted just all the time? We're going to drive right off that bridge. That's what's going to happen. We're going to make a wrong turn. It's good to have people correct us. Isaiah, through the book of Isaiah, he's, he's trying to warn. He's trying to correct. 
He's saying, sinful people, get back to God. You're backward in your lifestyle. I'll tell you what, we live in a lifestyle today where the culture is backward. It's a backward culture. And we need more Isaiahs who are in the workplaces, who, who are out there in the communities wherever we go, who say, ah, sinful people, turn to God. Amen. Get back to God. And that's what needs to happen. That's, that's, hey, that's what America needs, right? Amen. That, that's, that's what it needs. That's what we need in our life. Hey, uh, our life, so often we have ebbs and flows, right? Right? It's, it's kind of like Miss Joan who said, pray for marriage. Sometimes our marriages can be great for a week. And next week it's rough, right? <laughs> our life as well can be great for a week, but then can be rough. You know what we need to do during that week? Ah, oh, sinful person, get back to God. <laughs> right? That's what we need to do. We need to look ourselves in the mirror. And sometimes what we can do is we can get so comfortable in our own life where we're not willing to look ourselves in the mirror and say, get back to God. So then we need to make sure we're at church. Then we have that pastor who says, hey, get back to God. Get back in God's word. Stay faithful to God. Correct what's going on in your life. And you know what? If you get it fixed, then that's good. Amen. That's good. And uh, we need, just like Isaiah here, he's not comforting. He's, he's not pampering the, the southern kingdom here of Judah in their iniquity. That's not what he's doing. He's, he's calling them out. That's good. Amen. We, we need to be called out sometimes. Amen. I'll tell you what. I'm thankful for my wife. She calls me out sometimes. <laughs> you know, I need it. I, I, I need that. And uh, if I looked at her and said, no, 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 I can do whatever I want, that's a prideful person. You know what happens with pride? It goes before Paul. That's what happens. And uh, so we need to take that correction. But then also look at verse 23 here in chapter 1. It says, Thy princes are rebellious and companions of thieves. Everyone loveth gifts and followeth after rewards. They judge not the fatherless, neither doth the cause of the widow come unto him. Ooh. You know, you know what's happening here? Leadership's corrupt. Mm -hmm. That's corrupt leadership. Mm -hmm. Amen. How how does this how does this correlate today with us? How how does this correlate? Think about the time in which we live in. We live in a nation of sinful people, don't we? Mm -hmm. Have have you ever all just I don't have cable or anything like that, but those commercials, it's horrible. Yeah. I, I remember uh, the whole time we've been married, we've never had cable or anything like that, but um, back growing up, we had cable for a little bit, and then my parents were like, no way, <laughs> not doing this again. And uh, the reason why is because the stuff that would pop up on it, horrible, wicked, and, and, and making, making sin look good. Hey, we, we live in a nation where there's wicked people. There are new, there's a, a new speaker of the house. And he, uh, there's a quote where he said, I'm a Bible-believing Christian. And then you have people who are hating on him, comparing him to the, the, the main shooter, the shooter that, that, that just happened up in Maine. Really? Because he's a Bible-believing Christian? That's the type of world that we live in, mm -hmm. a sinful nation. But then think about it as well. Corrupt leaders. Judah had corrupt leaders. And Isaiah, he's calling them out. You know, sometimes th there's, there's the quote, have you ever heard of it? Separation of church and state? Have you ever heard that before? You realize that's not a biblical thing. Mm -hmm. Isaiah called them out. Isaiah called out the political leaders of their day. That's right. That's a, that's a Bible thing to do. Also, you realize separation of church and state is not in the Constitution as well. So whenever someone says separation of church and state, you've got to realize it's not the law of the land. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not a law thing. 
Uh, and, uh, uh, and if anything, that term actually comes from a Baptist preacher who wrote a letter to Thomas Jefferson. Uh, and so you can look at that separation of church and state. It goes back to a Baptist preacher named Jim Leland. Uh, and that's a, <laughs> it was in the letter to Thomas Jefferson because he didn't want the state controlling the church because mm -hmm. that's what they just came out of. Uh, but, man, hey, we have, we have political leaders who are corrupt. And Isaiah, he's calling them out here. We see he was calling them out, uh, the, the, the people, calling out the people in verse 4. Now he's going to those political leaders and calling them out. Uh, the princes, the, the political leaders were rebellious. They were companions of thieves. Have you ever seen uh, uh, the political leaders, the, the stuff that's going on today and all the under-the-counter checks and things like that that are being discovered today? It's a mess. They're companions of thieves. We also see it says, Everyone loveth gifts and followeth after rewards. Hey, that's the world that we live in. They're not, no one's following after God. They're following after those gifts, after rewards. And that's what they're doing. So we see Isaiah calling them out. Now, uh, Judah. Where was Judah located? I, I, I think this is really interesting. Back, uh, back when I was in college, I actually took a... The whole class, the whole class I had was actually on uh, the, the map of Israel <laughs> and, and knowing the cities uh, in, in the nation of Israel right there. And so uh, I, I wish I had a, a map or something I could show you. Um, but if you look at Israel's, oh yeah, maybe in your Bible. You might have it in your Bible. If you have your Bible, you can look in the back. Uh, but Judah, just right there along uh, the Mediterranean right there, you have Israel. And uh, actually, if you look on that map as well, there's going to be a slim location on there. If you look at one of the Old Testament ones, you're going to see a location called Philistia. And uh, you have the nation of Israel going around right here, like this, along the Mediterranean. And then you have a little part called Philistia. Now, what does Philistia sound like? Think Phil about it. Philistine. Philistine, right? Sounds like Philistine. Now, think about that word Philistine. What does that sound like today? Think about it in that location. Palestine. Isn't that interesting? Now, if we study our Old Testament, if we study our Bible, how many battles do we see of the Philistines versus the Israelites? A lot, right? Uh, what is going on today? Philistines versus the Israelites. That's what you have going on today. Isn't that interesting? Uh, but uh, if you see that location, Philistia, you'll see Gad, you'll see Ashkelon. Uh, you'll see those those cities right. You'll even see uh, Gaza. You'll see Gad, Gaza. You'll see that right there too, and that uh, that that little part of Philistia. But then you see that Judah. It's right there, and you have Philistia kind of off on the side along the Mediterranean, right there. And that, so that's where this is locating uh, the capital here in Judah is Jerusalem. Does anyone remember the capital in the Northern Kingdom? Samaria. Samaria. You have Samaria, uh, and. Uh, 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 so, uh, its capital was Jerusalem. Uh, throughout the book, Isaiah, he centers his activity right there in Jerusalem. Now, why was Isaiah written? Man, time went by fast. Why was Isaiah written? Uh, there's a historical purpose to this. Um, Isaiah was sent from God to warn Judah of the sins that lead to Israel's downfall and to warn of the evil that would lead to their own, uh, uh, that would lead to their downfall. Uh, we see his message here, Isaiah's message, it's twofold. There's two reasons, two purposes of his message here. Uh, the first one is, God will bring condemnation on Israel and Judah uh, through uh, other nations. And you're going to see, we see how, if, if we read in Second Chronicles, I'm going to talk about it today in the morning service. You see Second Chronicles that... Uh, that northern kingdom. You have the Assyrian army come and uh, take the northern kingdom. And that's, uh, hey, that's a penalty for their sins. Hey, because you're going to live a sinful lifestyle, God says, hey, I'm going to have this nation come and take you over. Uh, and then you see with the southern kingdom here, and at the end of Second Chronicles, uh, the last chapter talks about how uh, Babylon comes, takes them over. Uh, then seven years later, you have Persia come take over Babylon. So actually, in that Second Chronicles last chapter it mentions Persia, not Babylon. Uh, but Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar came and, and took them out. So you see condemnation of Israel and Judah through other nations. 
Uh, then the second purpose here, uh, Isaiah, he preaches about how uh, one day he's going to provide salvation through Israel and Judah uh, 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 through the nations. And then the, the doctrinal purpose here. Uh, this book, man, it comprehends great truths of the Old Testament regarding salvation. And we looked at that already uh, last week, Isaiah chapter 53. Did anyone read that this week? Anyone go through and read that? Oh man, I read that again this past week. I want to encourage you to read Isaiah 53. I want to encourage you to do it. What I want to encourage you to do is read it when there's no one else around you. Pray before you do. And if you cry, cry. <laughs> Don't feel bad about it. It's good. Isaiah 53, great book. Uh, but we see uh, the book comprehends great truths about salvation uh, uh, from man's sin, but then through Christ's redemptive work in that chapter 53. Uh, and then we also see about final restoration of this earth. Uh, let me see. I think I may end. Mm, what? Uh, let, let me do this. The, just a couple more things. This book, you could also call it the gospel according to Isaiah, <laughs> with how much the gospel is mentioned in here. And uh, uh, the, men, the gospel mentioned quite a bit. Now, you could divide this book into three sections, and I'll end with this. Chapter 1 through 35, we could see the prophetic section of that. And, uh, and then chapter 36 through 39, you see the historicalness of Isaiah, and then chapter 40 through 66, very much so centers on the Messiah, on, on the gospel. And uh, really, if you look at it through the books of the Old Testament, you see Christ through it. You, you, you see Christ. It's all pointing to Christ. And I'll tell you what, our life should point to Christ. Yeah. We should be people who point others to Christ. And uh, Isaiah is such a good book. It, it, it's really good. Then, and remember how many chapters are in Isaiah? 66. Does anyone remember how many books are in the Bible? 66. 66. 66. Hmm. And man, such a, <laughs> uh, I don't know why. I wonder why it's like that. Uh, but such a good book. I want to encourage you to take the time, read through Isaiah. It is great. Um, and and uh, I, I really want to encourage you to do that. Now, next week, we're going to be looking at Jeremiah. Now, what you could do in preparation for Jeremiah, you could read through the book of Jeremiah this week. And you could write down some questions you may have or, or some uh, things like that. And you can come next week and, hey, those answers, those questions might be answered next week. And uh, Brother Mike, he's going to be teaching on that. Jeremiah is such a good book. I really want to encourage you to come next week to hear about Jeremiah. Very good book. Let's go ahead and stand. Let's pray. And uh, there's some breakfast over there. I know a lot of people didn't get to have it yet. I want to encourage you to go over there get some breakfast. Eat some of that. It's good. Uh, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Thank you for this good Sunday school time, Lord. Please be with us during the Sunday morning service, just in about uh, 12 minutes. We love you, Lord. Thank you for everything you've done for us. So let me just, amen. Amen.